we're going to try this again. The, there was a mess up in our connection and it ended my live video. I was just getting started. And so I'm just going to go back, give a little background, and we're going to move forward. The enemy does not want this message getting out. I know that's for sure. Okay, so I was just saying, God's house is not a building. For so long, we have we have put God's house in a box, and we said we've tell we're telling people it's the building where the church meets. That building is nothing but four walls made of stone and wood, and you know we are the body. And so I want to talk to you today about how we can interact more with God, how we can hear from God and, and receive visions and dreams and, and have this interactive lifestyle with God. Because I know that many of us, we aren't having that. And we, we wonder why, why are some and not others? You know, why them, not me? And so I just want to open this up real quick. First of all, I want you to understand you are God's house. You are a living stone in God's house. And if you see, part of the problem with people not being able <clears throat> to have intimacy with God is because they believe, like in the Old Testament, before God shared his spirit with us, that we have to go to a place, and that's where God is. That's God's house. Kind of like he's housed in these big buildings where people set up and meet. And that's not true. Of course, he visits us, visits us there and enjoys the worship and things like that. But we are really trying to box people in and, I mean, God, box God in. And reality, we're boxing ourselves in if we think that we have to go somewhere to find God once a week. And what it's done is we're putting these walls up. And that's why we're not learning to hear the voice of God. That's why we don't have an interactive lifestyle with God. And so I just want to show you this in the Word. I'm not making this up. Um, in 1 Peter 2, 4 through 5, uh, Jesus said, coming to him a living stone, oh no, that's not, this is Peter, coming to him a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and valuable to God, you yourselves as living stones are being built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer sacrifices to God, the sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So listen, one more time, you as living stones are being built into a spiritual house. Okay? So God says, no longer do you have to go somewhere to find God. God wants to come to where you are and interact with you. Okay? He wants you to experience him. He took the old covenant and he made a new covenant with us. And that old covenant is passing away because it's not as good as the new covenant. And this new covenant is, you don't have to go somewhere to find me. I want to be where you are. I want this to be a lifestyle thing. I don't want this to be a once a week thing. And so, so much of the church has got these mentalities that's got to be broken down and broken off of them where I've got to go on Sunday to get my Jesus. And that is it's cutting us off if we think we go to church to find God. Now, you can go to the, the assembly. I prefer to call it the assembly. You can go to the assembly on Sunday and Wednesday, and you can get a word from the preacher, and you can get some fellowship. You can sharpen each other, and that's all wonderful, good things. I'm not coming against that. But what I'm telling you is if you think you go to that building to find God like he's housed there, and you don't realize this new covenant lifestyle, the kingdom lifestyle, is that Jesus actually desires, since you are the house of God, housing the Holy Spirit, that if you would begin to worship him daily, and that if you would begin to commune daily with him, you would begin to, inter he would begin to interact with you. Now, if I, okay, I, for instance, I'm married. If my husband came to me one day a week and really poured his love out on me, and there were six days where it was he was busy doing everything else but loving on me and spending time with me, I would feel neglected, and I probably wouldn't respond. And, you know, Jesus is our heavenly bridegroom, and he wants an interactive relationship just like a marriage. Okay? So I want you to think about this. Back in the garden... Okay, Jesus came to restore everything that was stolen in that garden when Adam and Eve ate the fruit. 
okay, before the enemy came in and lied and they believed him, there was a, what was going on in that garden before is Adam and Eve, they weren't quite like us. They were more spirit being, I believe, than they were this flesh and blood human. I think this flesh just, it put walls up immediately between us and God. But if you notice, they were accustomed to hearing God's voice. They were accustomed to seeing God. They knew when he came in that garden, he was walking around. They knew. They saw him. And he was calling out, where are you? They knew his voice intimately. So when Satan came, I want you to get this. When Satan came and he got them to eat that fruit of his lies, it transformed them and immediately zoop, these fleshly walls came up. So when you become a child of God, it's up to you to begin to fast, to begin to seek God and say, you know what? It's not okay. This, what this flesh is built up around me is not okay. I want the spirit to rise up over the flesh. And I want that interactive lifestyle. There's some of you watching right now. I see your names. I know you're hungry for this lifestyle, but you just don't know how to get there. And see, part of the problem is many p preachers and pastors, they have this mentality where come to church on Sunday so I can give you God. And I think a lot of them don't even have the tools to understand. They should be experiencing a supernatural lifestyle with God and then teaching you how to experience. They're not giving out the tools because I don't think that they have them, many of them. Now, supernatural, I say it all the time, don't let that word freak you out. The definition for that is something above the natural. Phenomenon happening above the natural means. And so it doesn't mean ghosts and goblins and ghouls. It means you serve a God that is so much above this natural realm. And when he begins to interact with you, he begins to do things that this world can't explain. Okay? You begin to have signs and wonders in your life that this world doesn't understand. They think it's foolishness, really. But they can't explain when God begins to interact with you. And he's got so many calls and purposes for us um, that if we would just learn that we are the living stones of God, we are the house of God, the church of God, we would begin to say, you know, for instance, let me put it this way. For years, I went to church. I was there every Wednesday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, trying to get all the Jesus I could. And God began to speak to me. And he told me, it's a little hypocritical that you go to that building and you cut up worshiping me. Cut up, cut up, cut up. Just worship me as hard as you can. And then you wait a few days until you come back again and you do it there again. But when you're at home, you're going about your life and, you know, you're getting caught up in life and it's almost hypocritical that you would come worship me here in front of everybody when I'm waiting for you right there in the secret place where nobody is because I want to talk to you intimately. And so I, sorry, it paused. So I took that and I said, all right, God, I'm going to do this. I, I, I'm going to set time apart for you every day. And so I made an altar in my home. I made my home an altar. Okay. My life became an altar. I was the sacrifice upon that altar. And so instead of going to church to worship Jesus, I learned to make a lifestyle of worship. Okay. Okay. And so at first you have to come against that flesh. That flesh is saying, you're so busy. You've got so much to do. But I tell you, God is so faithful. If you will set aside time and just get on your knees, you can, you can do whatever you want to do. Put, if you have to put the music on to get in the presence, that's okay. Don't always uh, depend on music to carry you into the presence. You know, don't let that be a crutch because, you know, we can't always have that music there. And just do whatever it takes. Spend a little time in the word and ask God. Say, show me something I've never noticed before. 
or let me read something I've always read and see something new in it, Lord. He can take us even deeper into the word where you'll read a story or read something that you've always read and you'll read it again. And it's like a fire is attached to it. And it means totally something more than it meant last time. Not different necessarily, but more. And you have a deeper understanding. So I'm just telling you, here's a secret. Here's a key. Those people out there who's saying they're hearing from God, they're seeing God, they're experiencing all these awesome things with God, they're not lying. They've just learned the secret of the secret place, which is making your life worship, a worship place. Make yourself a house of worship. And God responds to that. The Bible says, one of my favorite scriptures says, that the eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro over the earth, looking for those whose hearts are truly his. And if you'll get a hold of that and you'll say, you know what? He's looking over this earth and he's looking for those whose hearts are truly his. He's going to see this flame burning bright. He's going to notice me. I'm not just going to blend in with the crowd. God is worthy and I'm going after him. And when you realize there's so much we've not tapped into and it's, it's a travesty. If you think about it, that God has all this beautiful stuff on the table and we leave it there and we push it away and we say, I'm full, God, or I'm coming once a week to spend time with you. And I'll, you know, but we should be so consumed by the fire of God. And the only way you, you can get hung, you, you, the, the, the more you feed yourself with God, this is a promise, the hungrier you get. You know why? Because he starts to fill these places that you didn't even know were hungry. They're starving to be filled or watered by God. And the more that these places are filled, you want to be filled up even more. So let me just tell you this, just to give you some practical knowledge. So I went through this season of when I got a hold of this and I spent time in the secret place daily. I couldn't stay out of it. I mean, I would be doing my dishes and stopping doing my dishes because I would feel the Lord calling me saying, come spend time with me. I put my dishes down in the middle of doing dishes and just go spend time with the Lord. And when I tell you, he was pouring out his spirit upon me like you wouldn't believe. I walked around feeling like I was vibrating constantly. There was electricity in my hands and God began to heal people when I would pray for them, you know, and it, it was such an awesome time. And so that was in this season of, of seeking God. Well, circumstances happened and different things happened. And um, I, I, I came out of that season and God was still with me. But I'm here to tell you, when you connect to God, you're activated in the spirit. It's like you're moving towards him. When you choose not to connect to God, I didn't hear anything anymore. I went from daily, all day long, hearing the voice of God, receiving crazy visions, um, things that would come true, dreams, all kind of amazing things that God wanted to show me. He so desired to show me, but he couldn't show me unless I went to heaven to get it. Does that make sense? John the Baptist, I believe, said something about, you, you basically, uh, oh, I saw it earlier. You, you have to go to heaven to get heaven, basically, right? Does that make sense? I know it does. Amen. <laughs> it's good stuff. So, I just want to give you tools because I, I know what it's like to not hear from God. And I know why I didn't. And I know there's multitudes in the church who don't hear from him. They live almost a carnal Christianity where they go to church and they come home. There's no fire burning. So if you would just today, just grab a hold of the grace and say, you know what? Out of obedience, I might not even feel it yet. I'm going to go try God. I'm going to see what this girl's saying. I'm going I'm to take a word on it. I'm gonna, let me do an experiment. And I promise you, God is waiting right there. And so, if we'll discipline ourselves just to go away with the Lord. And you know, 
something else, a little tip for you. There's times where I'll be doing housework while I'm praying to God. And that's good. I do believe he appreciates that. I know he does. I'm constantly, all day long, I'm communing with God. And I'll stop in the middle of it and I'll, I'll worship for a little while. And then I'll go about my business. But let me tell you something. I really don't know how to put into words. When I put everything else to the side, when I put everything else to a halt, and I put my eyes upon him alone, something different happens. It's like the portals of heaven just open up and pour out on me. I could have a conversation and I could be looking over here and not really paying a chalk to you and worry about my phone. And think about you, you're, you're in a room with somebody and you're really trying to talk to them about something important and they keep looking at their phone. They're distracted. Do you feel a connection there? God is the same way. We've got to be connected to him. So I promise you, take my word for it. If you will go and disconnect from everything and purposefully connect into God, you will experience him in ways that you've never experienced him. And guess what the good news is? You can't tap out with God. Like you, He's untapped. And, and, and he's inexhaustible. And he says, as deep as you want to go, I'll take you. But you have to be willing to go on the journey. You have to be willing to go on the journey. And you have to be willing to almost fight for what is yours. Because this flesh is strong. You're robed in flesh. But God wants to return to you back what was stolen in that garden. And that's the ability to commune with God in a very real way tangible way literal way I'm not talking about just kind of talking into the air and you don't get a response I'm talking about communing with God where there is interaction and when heaven interacts with you you know how you know it's different you didn't you didn't experience these things at all before then all of a sudden you start to experience things that I really don't have English words to explain to you. And I'm here to tell you, God, let me walk through the season where I was there. And then I wasn't because I detached from God. I got hurt. And I detached from God for a little while. I still loved God. I was just hurt. And I chose not to spend time with him anymore because I was hurt. I felt like he rejected me, so I rejected him kind of thing. And in those times... The dreams, the visions, the voice of God shut off like a light. It was nothing. And it was all carnal. It was all flesh. It was just a normal life like everybody else. So I'm here to tell you, if you will grab a hold of this message, I'm giving you gold right now. There are many pastors in the pulpits that are not telling you this. Because guess what? They don't even know it. And some of them do know it. And, and, and I don't know why they choose not to tell you, but I'm telling you. Okay? If you will grab a hold of God and you will say, I want what they had in that garden. Jesus died to restore to me everything that was going on in that garden. And there's nobody in the word that did not interact with God in a personal way. That's for me too. Those weren't special people. They were just like you and me. God wanted them. And God wants to give it to you. If you realize God wants to give this to you more than you even could imagine you want it, that helps. Because <laughs> it's true. He already died. He shed his blood to give this kind of, this interaction with you. The spirit was housed, you know, in the tabernacle before. And then when Jesus died, his spirit came out of that curtain so he could fill us. And when you're filled with the spirit of God, you experience things this world can't give you. How can you expect, how can you say that you're filled with a supernatural God and never experience anything supernatural? It's not possible. So if you're not and you are a believer, go tap into God. It's that simple. Choose to go after God. My favorite words, press in to God. Sometimes I'll get in the secret place. And I, I won't feel him like I expect to feel him. And I'll say, I press into you. I press into you. And just by saying those words alone, I feel it right now. I 
feel myself go closer. I feel myself reaching for him. And you know, a lot of times, let me give you another little secret. This is revelation. If you go into the secret place, that's your worship time, that's your communion, your devotion with God, where you put everything away but him. And you don't feel like you're finding him. And you feel almost dry. Well, guess what? The ground's dried up there. He wants you to press in further. Because guess what? He's got more for you. A new land to explore. He's got a, a deeper place. He's got, he's moved on and he wants you to follow him into the deeper place with him. So don't be discouraged when you say, oh, I was there, I was there. And then I'm not feeling anything now because I've been there too. Even when I was seeking God, I'm like, I don't feel anything now. And God says, come after me. I'm somewhere different because I'm going to bring you somewhere different in me. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Amen. Our God is an interactive God. He's personal. He wants to be personal with us. So if you will just turn and put your eyes on him, just turn and put your eyes on him and say, you know what? You're worthy of my attention. You're worthy of my affections. You're worthy of more than I give you. We are all guilty of getting caught up in the flesh life. And we neglect the spirit. So my encouragement for you today is to be like John the Beloved. He's my hero. <laughs> um, I just love him because all the disciples were in a room with Jesus. And um, you can find this story in John 13. They were all in the room with Jesus. And he was telling them, you know, somebody's about to, uh, let me read it. Uh, One of you will betray me, he says. The disciples started looking at one another, uncertain which one he was speaking about. One of his disciples, the one Jesus loved, that's John, John, um, was reclining close beside Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him to find out who it was he was talking about. So he leaned back against Jesus, that's how close he was, and asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus replied, he's the one I give the piece of bread to after I have dipped it. So think about that. He's in a room full of his, his 12 followers, and he's, he's got a mystery. He's got a secret. And Simon Peter, who you hear about him probably more than anybody, him and Paul, you hear about Peter. He himself had to ask the one closer to Jesus, what was Jesus saying? He wanted to know the mystery. And guess what? Jesus revealed the mystery. He could have said, no, I can't tell you that. Peter had the desire. John had the proximity. We want to be in the proximity, closer in proximity to Jesus. And we want to be so close that we can feel his heartbeat, that we, we can hear it, that if he chooses to whisper to us, that we recognize that whisper. You know, I always say, you know, the woman at his feet that poured out that oil. Um, and he said her portion was greater than anybody. You know, everybody else was running around that room. But she had the proximity. She knew with the scent of his skin. His personal scent. You have to be very intimate with somebody to recognize their personal scent. And that woman knew the personal scent of Jesus. Think about that. He desires for us to get so close that we know intimate details others don't know. He'd tell them if they chose to come. But when we don't choose to come, he does not ever force his self on us. Ever. He knows he is a prize. And he said, I've heard this too. He doesn't hide himself from his children. He hides himself for his children. So like I said, the eyes of the Lord search to and, search to and fro over the whole earth, looking for those whose hearts are truly his. Great scripture. He's looking for those who will come after him and say, you are a prize. I want to go where you go. I want to do what you do. I want to know your voice. The Bible says the sheep know the shepherd's voice. 
And it says that Jesus didn't do anything the Father did not tell him to do. He knew the voice of God. We run around like chickens. If we cannot tune in and listen to the voice of God in seasons and, 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 and situations, he's got direction for us. He's a God of order. And he wants us to know, this is what I need you to do right now. In this breath, I need you to say this one word to this person. They'll know what it means. You know, there's the heavenly wisdom comes from heaven. It's not already in here. It's in the spirit that's in us. So we've got to tap into heaven to have that wisdom to know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Gosh, God just wants to navigate us. He wants to be the navigator of our soul because our soul is our emotions. And those emotions can be fleshly driven or they can be spirit driven. So he wants to synchronize our soul to the navigation of the spirit. So that is my word for you today. I pray right now that Jesus just comes and invades your home. I pray that you learn to make your home an altar, your life an altar, and that you get revelation that you are the church, that you can do the works of Jesus out on the street, in your personal life, in your very own home. It's a daily thing. It's a daily walk. So I just pray for deeper revelation for everybody that's watching this video. I pray for the grace of God to consume you and that it would give you the, the hunger to move forward and go after God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed today.